So welcome back to Newcastle Central, and we have a, a little bit of a maybe unexciting uh, video clip here. Nothing super exciting in terms of working on the layout. Um, in the last couple of video clips, I've been working on on the platforms. I decided that I would change track, no pun intended, um, and try and work on this little access hatch over here, which I've been meaning to do for a, a long time. This is one of those things where I, I put this in place uh, when I was doing all the best work way back in uh, April and May of this year, so going back six plus months now, and never really came back to it. Um, so what I had originally had was just this piece in place, and I couldn't figure out if it was going to be lift out, where the whole thing would come out, or if I was going to make it flip up, and what I actually ended up doing was making it so that it would flip up like that. Um, you know, not sold on those two hinges that are there, um, but that's where we are. So I'll go to a, a little bit of a quick clip where I was putting the tracks back in place and talking about the hinge works, and then we'll come back and we'll see a couple of trains run. So this is the highly technical way to wear down the track while you're gluing it. Uh, some zesty Santa Fe style chicken and some Bush original baked beans although we do cheat and we uh, we actually chop up a whole bunch of bacon fry that um, and then uh, fry a bunch of vegetables and stuff oh Kenai's obviously heard us talking this is uh, this is my little helpy here hi Kenai uh, so yeah we do then chop up some uh, onion and celery and whatever and fry that in the bacon fat and then do the baked beans but anyway enough of the little culinary uh, diversion all I'm doing here is just weighing down the track just to make sure that it's not going to move around too much. Um, so what I ended up doing was just very, very gently lifting up this Pico track work. Uh, it was actually really easy. Uh, it came up uh, just very, very uh, gently put uh, X-Acto knife underneath just to very, very gently peel it away. All came up just fine. And then just scrap the underside again with uh, with the knife um, just for all the little flakes of the glue to come off. Cleaned up just fine. Um, and then I was able to uh, lay it back down again. So all I've done is made sure that uh, everything is lining up here just right. Um, and I had really spent quite a bit of time getting it lined up height-wise as well. Um, and the same over on the other side. This track ends um, because I don't have the yard. That's my work area. But the tiny yard will come in here. It'll be a little bit of an extension coming out. The tiny yard will come in here. So um, this kind of what would end up being one of the main freight lines uh, just kind of stops right there. Um, there's a point all oh, right around where those Mark, Mark IV coaches are. Um, that kind of leads into nothing as well. Um, and hinges, I use somewhat low profile hinges. I'm not 100% that that's what I'll stick with. There's another one hanging around the other side of the big bean can. Not entirely sure that's what um, I will stick with, but they're at least um, a little bit low, at least somewhat blend in color wise. Um, I'm sure I can figure out something, uh, some kind of shrubbery or foliage maybe, uh, just to kind of cover that up. Um, what I had thought of was uh, some kind of little trackside boxes, signal boxes, maybe relay boxes, um, something that I could drop over here um, when I was actually inside the shed. And then when I was ready to leave, I could just lift the box same on the other side, lift some kind of line side, um, line side signal box, electrical box off, and then drop it back over, um, you know, once it's back down. So we'll leave this to dry a little bit, and then we'll see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to try lifting it up and down again. So the glue is mostly dried anyway, there's still uh, a little bit of the white colouring left to it, that'll dry clear um, in the 12 hours or so, um, a little bit cooler and damper out here today, you can probably see the rain coming down the shed, uh, that's why this front door's closed. Yeah, I'm quite happy um, with how this how this ended up, uh, I ended up having to uh, sand this a little bit flush and put a little bit of an angle on those and the same on the other side just so that as it would then come into place it uh, it'll come in quite flat. Uh, you know, I ended up getting it very very smooth um, you know the fingers coming across is not really any kind of 
stickiness a little, little bit, but not enough for the trains to have uh, too much of a problem. And the reason why it was important for me to try and do this was when it was just kind of the lift out hatch, um, it really wasn't aligning itself properly. Um, there was a little bit of movement in the tracks and it was almost a little bit, you know, it's kind of skewed one way. Um, so the tracks never really perfectly lined up and so as I was having a uh, running session, um, you know, I was having some problems. That one is still just a little bit high, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, there we go. Um, so when I was trying to have running sessions, I was having frequent derailments over here. Um, part of that actually, um, I have somewhat narrowed down uh, to this particular Mark IV uh, Buffet Coach. Um, it has slightly different wheels than my other Mark IVs. Try and zoom in. Um, it has more of the black wheels on them, whereas most of the others have silver wheels. Probably also need to regauge those. Uh, those wheels, um, but that was a frequent source of derailment as well. So I've taken that off. Um, so again, my my HST formations are only a five plus two. There's no buffet couches in each, in either of the HSTs that we're going to run here, um, just because I found them a little bit problematic. Um, I am still having a little bit of trouble with it being cold out here now that. Rain has, has set in in Seattle, so even though I'm taking my locos inside when I bring them out, they're just really not getting warmed up all that great. So I do still need to figure out some insulation out here, but I've also been um, filling my time in a little bit with some Engage model railroading, uh, which is a little bit different, but the local club up here that I'm a part of uh, mostly does Engage. So last weekend I was at a train show helping them set up a couple of different layouts, and I did pick up. Um, it was a Hikado uh, AMD 70 SE Union Pacific uh, Fred Loco and a bunch of wagons. So I might do uh, a little bit of a side set of videos on adventures in Engage as well, um, just until I can get a little bit more going out here. Um, I don't have the platform out here, for example, so this is all kind of looking rather boring at the moment. Um, I have started work on that second platform, but again, because of all the rain coming down, I don't really want to keep bringing it in and out of the shed and risk getting all that cardboard damage. Um, anyway, quite happy with, with how this works. Like I said, it, it is not a particularly exciting thing to be happening on the layout. You know, it's just like, okay, great, I can lift that up and now I can, now I can walk through it. Um, but it is actually somewhat important just from a, a psychological perspective. Uh, one of the things that have been kind of, you know, putting me off from coming out here when it is kind of cold and dark and wet is that I was having to, you know, crawl through under here every time and especially if I was back and forth and back and forth if I was working on some of the platforms inside the house but I had to keep coming out here um, to get stuff you know I'm coming out in the dark and the rain having to crawl around and that wasn't much fun so now I can quite easily lift that up um, and get in and out of here a little bit easier um, so happy with how, how that runs so uh, we'll just run trains over this a couple of times just to prove that it does actually work the tracks are aligned and not getting derailments um, you know we would have found that pretty much every other time a train <laughs> went over this access hatch we would have had a we would have had a derailment and that's with or without the buffet coaches so I am happy with with how this has turned out thanks for all that, that have been subscribing to the channel um, you know again it's it's great to see the number of people that are subscribed to the channel now so you know please do subscribe please do sub share leave your comments like the videos um, you know it helps keep me motivated especially as we're as we're coming into winter here uh, so thanks for watching take care bye